It is the 23rd of May, 2016. I am Ralph Turciano, and we're here to cover the top three health headlines of the past seven days, starting off with number one. Antibiotics that kill gut bacteria also stop the growth of new brain cells. What researchers discovered was the following. Antibiotics strong enough to kill off the gut bacteria also stop the growth of new brain cells in the hippocampus, a section of the brain associated with the memory, at least in regard to animals. Now, however, they were able to reverse it. But keep in mind, if you're taking a lot of antibiotics for whatever reason, and you're not doing probiotics or exercising, there's a slippery slope down. Luckily, the adverse side effects of the antibiotics could be reversed in animals who receive probiotics or exercised on a wheel, or in our case, a treadmill. So, antibiotics, nasty for memory or the brain, got to do something to help offset it, probiotics or exercise. Number two, and possibly avoid this, common antimicrobial agent rapidly disrupts gut bacteria. Yes, once again, triclosan. A new study suggests that triclosan, an antimicrobial, antimicrobial, and antifungal agent found in many consumer products ranging from hand soaps to toys and even toothpaste can rapidly disrupt bacterial communities found in the gut. What does that mean? Triclosan has been a concern in part because it is widely used and is also readily absorbed through the skin and gastrointestinal tract. Showing up in urine, feces, and breast milk, it has also been associated with endocrine disruption in fish and rats. It may also act as a liver tumor promoter and can alter the inflammatory response in regard to other things even outside of this. Now, it's kind of interesting. Give you an idea. Look at the release date of both these news articles. The first one saying common antimicrobial agent rapidly disrupts gut bacteria, released on May 18th. And then on the exact same day on May 18th, antimicrobial, if I can say it right, in common toothpaste doesn't impact gut or oral microbiome. This is something which I see on a daily basis. It's conflicting reports and it gets confusing. So the, since the weight of the evidence is against the use of triclosan, I would take the one from Oregon State University as being the most credible. Number three, probiotic. Yeah, there's a trend here. Bacteria could provide some protection against cadmium poisoning. A lot of people have cadmium poisoning between smokers, people use contaminated water supplies. This is an important one. Lactobacillus plantarum could inhibit the absorption at least in animals' intestines by binding to cadmium. What it actually does is it also increase the excretion of the cadmium. What this means is the following is the probiotics reduce the inflammation and reverse the disruption of tight junctions and reduced intestinal permeability, which is normally caused by the cadmium itself. So pretty positive results in regard to Lactobacillus plantarum, detoxifying this heavy metal. Keep in mind, cadmium has been associated with contamination of toys, jewelry, whole line of things. So it's not a bad idea if there's a concern to add this very, very safe probiotic into the diet one way or the other. Again, those are the top three health headlines of the past seven days. And I look forward to seeing you all next Monday once again. Catch you in a bit. Bye.